This is the Pilot P1. It was built by the Pilot Business Company or the Pilot Pen Company. Yeah, I know those are instructions for its successor. Good luck finding any information about it on the company's webpage. They overcame many difficulties like sailors of old, but not the difficulty of writing down calculator history with their pens. In 1961, Pilot acquired Keybar, which was making this mechanical calculator. Pilot wisely removed the clearing knobs and added clearing cranks. Most P1s are this color. Mine is black and came with this leather carrying case that has seen better days. It's very similar to the P3, except for the P3 is a lot smoother. I don't know if that has to do with the age of mine or that the P3 was a smoother device. It has those terrible thumb inputs on the levers, which are not at all user friendly. They're hard to see and they're hard to grab. The P3 is the same way. If you start your equation with a uh, subtraction, the counter register will show a little division number and shift to the complement numbers. That little lever on top allows you to enter, no, enter a number in without affecting the counter. So it will disengage the counter. This is helpful during um, division. So if I were to enter this number in normally, there it registered a one up top, but now I'll do it again and engage that lever and you'll see it, it did not in, in, uh, increase. So now I'll approximate pi but instead of doing it the typical way of successive subtraction, I'm going to do division by addition. And this is promoted by the, uh, the P3 user manual. So I enter in the, uh, let's see, the divisor into the uh, register. And then I try to add it up until the accumulator shows the dividend that I want. And if I go a little higher, I'll just subtract as necessary. So I try to get exactly 355. This method has the advantage that the uh, dividend doesn't disappear when the problem is solved. And instead, it'll show you the, all three parts of the problem. Now here, the answer came up 3.14160, which is rounding. If I would have done it the normal way, it would have said 159 at the end. So here it is with the case off. You can see the mechanism is pretty well exposed. Here's that division lever up top that you'll see how it disengages the counter from the, um, the gear train. So here are the thumb tabs engaged, and as I crank this around, you'll see a second set of what look like thumb tabs, and here come the first set. Their purpose is to engage with that clearing lever, and I'll show how that happens. As that clearing lever comes up, that rack slides to the side just enough to engage those teeth. In resting position, you can see it slides just out of the way of those teeth so as to not interfere as they come around. It's kind of hard to film, but I got it in this, in this view here. And you can see right as it goes back, there it shifted over to the side, and then it'll shift again to engage those teeth. Pretty clever.
Here's the uh, back of it. Nothing too exciting going on back here. Here's the bottom showing the uh, main spring, bringing the carriage back to first position. There's its magnificent gear train. And finally here it is next to the P3, which is a bit uglier, a bit bigger, but a heck of a lot smoother. So that's the Pilot P1. Thanks for watching.